a beautiful Cardona Negon, like the theme of this, uh, of this piece. Let's see how well you're versed in your Cardonaism. Actually, some of you really are. Yosef Chassid. Yeah, you know this one? So, Sassim Bashem. So, Sassim Bashem. So, Sassim Bashem. So, Sassim Bashem. אני שמח בזה שאני משמח את השם. אני שמח בזה שאני משמח את השם. סוס הסיס בשם, סוס הסיס בשם. So sasis bashem. So sasis bashem. Ani sameyah bezeh sheani mesameyah et Hashem. Ani sameyah bezeh sheani mesameyah et Hashem. Beautiful words. So, Sassis Ba Hashem. I will delight in Hashem. Ani Sameach. What does that mean? He gives a perush. Ani Sameach. Beze Shani Misameach et Hashem. I'm happy. Because I'm making my, my, my Ribbon Shleilam happy. So the Yisod that Rav Kluger, uh, where we we're going to see today, is tying into what we did last two weeks, last few weeks, is that a Simcha, a, a, something that's available to us all the time, is something we don't pay that much attention to. Right now, do you feel that you're giving Hashem Simcha? Why, why don't you feel like you're giving Hashem Simcha right now? What's that? Because I'm not filled with Simcha myself. Okay. Say that, yeah. Like last year, I was talking about, like, it's hard to say Shkoda to myself. Like. Right. Uh, it's the same, yeah, same thing. Sorry to break the rhythm, but I feel like I am giving Simcha. Ruch Hashem. Ruch Hashem. And Ari, you, you don't feel like you're giving it, you, because you're not the Simcha, so you can't bring the Rebona Shleil on the Simcha. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's understand what, what, what Avodat Hashem is. And let's understand what we're trying to do over here right now. If you see on the top of this parak, this is from a different sefer, Yisrael Bechiri, um, but it's the same theme of what we've been learning. Rav Kluger quotes over here that, I know you're not Pesimcha right now so much, but you chose good this morning, correct? Did you choose good? This part of it, yeah. Habur, <laughs> make minion. <laughs> but you, you chose good. Like, yeah. You start, okay, Azov, Azov, what's going to? You don't work on what I may or not choose later in the day. Right now you chose good. Simchato shel yehudi bebchirato batov me'asimcha shezacha le'adot lifnei Hashem idvarach. You brought simcha up before Hashem by choosing this morning good. Just acknowledge it. You chose good. <coughs> so he says over here, b'ze sheretzono idvarach yatsa min ha'alama el ha'gidui. The fact that your ratzon came from being in the hiddenness to the revealed. Inside, you might have wanted a bunch of things, but you, you, you chose good, so it came out, and you acted upon your choice. Even though, like you could say, look what I worked through, and I chose good, right? So a real yid understands that even the choosing to do good, that's also from the Ribbon HaShleinam. Okay, so shlav by shlav. The first lab is I woke up this morning. I could have done anything. I brought, like Rabbi Amalek says, Chashavti, Drachai, I think. It's the last, it's the Midrash in Bechur Kosei. Rabbi Amalek wakes up in the morning, he says, I was, I was contemplating where I should go, and I saw my feet led me to the base Midrash. And he got such simcha from it. So whether you're besimcha or not, your choice to be here right now, to be in Torah, to be in the world of meaning, bring simcha before the Rebbe You know, let's stop over there, and now 
let's not try to decipher the second part of what we just said, but let's start over here where our Rav Kluger is going to, he's quoting a Kedusha Slevi. Listen, this is a very, very crucial piece because we see so often that so many people that are truly engrossed in Avodah Hashem, it doesn't really ever touch upon what he's speaking about now. Did you think for a second over Shabbos that you're bringing Simcha before HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Or were you worried more about how much are you feeling Shabbos? It's a very deep thing. It's a very weird thing. If you could like remove yourself from the picture for a second and make it less about you or where you were holding, how much you felt it, and say, wait, wait, wait a second, this is not Shabbos. I brought Nachas to the Yerbon Wait a second. Did, did, did that play a role in my Onik Shabbos at all? No, I was wondering if this was good enough, if that was good enough. Did I get enough sleep? Did I, was I good? Those are all nice details, but there's a key thing that's missing in the way that we view Avodat Hashem. Le'alam advarim ha'yisodim she'katav b'sefer al-Kadosh Kedush Aslevi is quoting from the B'dit Shebe Vezel Ashono. Ki k'sha'adam mitpalel ve'lomed ve'oved et ha'bore baruch hu baruch shmo b'torah u'b'mitzvot azai yesh la'kadosh baruch hu simcha g'dola Every mitzvah you do, every tefillah you do, this gives the Rebona Shleim tremendous happiness. Mo she'amru chazal, l'shem shisha dvarim ha'zevach nizbach. For six things, the zevach, the, 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 the korban is brought forth. V'amru, l'shem leach nichoach, meaning one of the things you bring a korban forth, is in order to create a reach nichoach. What's a reach nichoach? A beautiful fragrance, right? Rashi explains, Reach nichoach shenachat ruach lefanav sheamar b'naaser etzano. Today, we know we don't have korbanot. And there was a korban. And what did we create with bringing a korban? We created this concept of a reach nichoach. There was a fragrance. There was this aroma in the air. Today, that we don't have korbanot. What do we do? What do we have? as a substitute. So regarding a korban, what's the substitute of a korban? Tefillah. The substitute of the reyach is nachat ruach. Is nachas. Is nachat. Now, there's an p- essential problem in us spiritual seekers if we don't get a sense at all that we bring nachat ruach before the Rebona Shalom just by the simple avodat Hashem that we do. That you got up this morning and went to Minyan it's like when you brought the korban onto the mizbeach, and there was a reach nichach coming from the korban. So too, exactly with us. You took that nefesh bahamit, Alter Rebbe says, you put it on the mizbeach this morning, you woke it up, you woke up the ahava mesoteris, the embedded love. This brings nachas before Hashem. Simple as it is. Ubezeh, Rav Kluger says, third paragraph, how much is that part of your Avodat Hashem? How much is it part of your Avodat Hashem? Now, why, let me ask you a question. Why isn't this something that we feel is a goal, a purpose, or something we think we take as serious as other things? The awareness that my mitzvot right now, that what we're doing right now, Brings nachat to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Why isn't this a focus in our awareness? Look at Yiddishkeit today. The world, the world doesn't have to. Individually? Is that, is that a um, individually, definitely. I think most. I mean, that's the only thing that keeps me going. I wake up in the morning and do is the fact that. What keeps you going? No, I mean. That you're aware I'm that you're saying, bringing nachat. Yeah, I'm very aware of that because if I think. Let's say I had an appointment, I had to be there at a certain time. If they didn't work and they needed me there or whatever, I would make sure that I was right. at that time. Locked and loaded. Was like, Man, if I'm not there on time, you know, I should treat that the same way. So, but why? But the only consequence that I would feel, like really, is Hashem wants me to do, as opposed to, seems like more urgent if your boss or your individual or your wife or whoever it is is, you know, then you're that's already a person more motivated. I see with my kids, for example. They, you know, one, he'll wake up, there's a test, you know, although he had a problem recently. But generally, I'm saying if there's a test, whatever, he's going to be there on time. But if it's like Minion, you know, wake up, wake up, maybe he's not going to wake up. So it's a different. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean. No, I but I'm, I'm speaking I'm to the person that. that's in Shul. 
I'm thinking of the person that he, he's there, he does, he's in the program, right? What about, what, why is it that that person doesn't put an emphasis on the fact that right now he's bringing Nachat to HaKadosh Baruch Why is it more this internal wondering of, is it, am I doing it good enough or not? As opposed to, my, me showing up is, brings Nachat to Ruach before the Ribbon Hashem. Because we get comfortable. We do it every day, so it's just, you feel like it's just routine. That should right. even be more of a reason for it to be more accessible for me to actually think that I'm bringing that up if I'm we comfortable. Yeah, we need feedback. I think the way most of us are raised, I mean, there is no personal relationship. We have to believe in it. It's MNA. We have to, you have, if you have MNA and you believe in it, great. I know, but, but if, if you were if told. If you don't and you were told, then, okay, well, we're like. But if you were, if you were kind of programmed from a young age that every moment you engage yourself, in a holy act, this brings Nacha to Hashem, and that was the way you approach everything, oh, it would be way then different. Then would be empty, because everyone would be here. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I have a secret to tell you. Even in Eretz Israel, people are not yet in this level. No, I see some of our, some of our kids are being raised this way. It's incredible. Some of the little kids here in our community. Ruch Hashem. I have a daughter who fully recognizes what you're talking about. I wasn't raised that way. You really believe you can bring Nacha Ruach to Hashem? You really believe that Little Yossi coming to shul can bring nacha to the creator of the world. Like I, 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 like, I almost have trouble. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just that's me. That's me. I have trouble really buying. And even sometimes, I, even even when I read Rav Birman, who is the feedback, like, gives me such kids. And if Hashem loves when you do. It gives such nacha and shemayim when when you like. Look, don't get me wrong, if you educated as a kid, and that's part of your psyche, I'm not arguing that that would help them, but I'm saying, like, if you're asking me now at this point, can I really buy in on my MS on ET, and I give not Haruf Hashem, and I have trouble getting there? I agree with you. I, I think all of us are in that. We're not mindful that, of that it because we don't believe it. Right. That's what it is. Not, not because I do it all the time. It's because I just, I mean, yeah, I do it all the time because I do it all the time, but I just, I don't buy it. That, that, that's why we're talking about this, because... If it was simple for us, we wouldn't have to. We wouldn't have to like you know reminders and work on it. It's exactly because of what you just said right now. Nachon Melak, does anyone really buy it? Well, I'd love to. Oh my God, I'd love to feel this. I would love to. However, is that what's happening? Why not? Now, what's the problem? Like, what's what's stopping us from buying? If I told you right now, Yossi, right now you're giving nachos to Hashem. What's the voice inside you that says? Nah, let me go back to check the scores. Like what is what what's what's the voice that says that's not real? He's so he's so large, he's so significant. Mama Refluger is addressing exactly what you're saying. The problem we have is believing that when we, we're in the light of infinity, little little me can have a spa on something so big. Bemet, I wasn't here before, I'm gonna die. Me, a passing through this world, is going to bring Nacha to Misha Amar Vahaya Olam. And then he's going to show us that that's actually something that a person has to work on every single day, that emuna and that statement we just said right now. Because it's very hard to really believe that. Absolutely. Let's, let's continue. Ubezei kar vodatenu. Latet nachat ruach labore baruchu liotzveinu uleboreinu baavodatenu tama with our simple avodas Hashem. With all our words, we continue to bring chiyot, livelihood, into this world. We have a hashpa in this world. What we're doing right now, it might not seem like it, we're in a basement in the West Bank, whatever that's, whatever, however the world calls us, we are, act, and we're talking about God, right? We're actually doing a lot right now. We are. See, Rav Kluger, like Rav Itam Schwartz, the Bilvavi, says that as long as you think these things, but you don't put it out into the world, world through your words, you're right. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get there. So he says, come to this recognition and start talking, talking about what you were taught. Ish asher notzar let, let's, I don't want to get too vulgar, but each of us here were composed from, from, a, from, from, a, from, a, from a seed. Each of, like, it's so amazing how we became such bali bite in this world. Like, what did we come from? Nothing. Right? 
And where are we going to end up? Six feet under. What's the Torah, what's the, what's the tefillah we have from these words right now? Ribbon HaShlein. I'm told that I actually make a difference and that my avod counts, but it's very hard for me to feel this. That me, who came from nothing, who knows, Khalila, if I have these issues of where my parents were holding when they actually brought me into the world and all the other issues that come with that. And me, I'm going to come make a little statement my few years here in this world that actually has an effect on you and on all of your creation. I know you're telling me that this is the Avod of the Yid to think like this, but Ribbon Shleilam, it seems impossible. It seems very difficult. Did I compose your tefillah yet? What would you add to the mix? Anything? I'm, I, 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 like, I'm told, like, who, who am I told by? And where am I told from? I Meaning, yes, like, 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 where do we know? Like, this is Hasidu new. Right. Yosef Kardunar right. told me, Ani oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Ani yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks yeah, like it. Fine. He looks like, Rav Biederman tells me all the time. Yeah, that's right. That's in a Hasidish idea. It's, I mean, Pinchas brought Hashem Nachas Ruach. Like, there's an idea right. of Nachas Ruach in the Torah. It's not this. Well, the, the Malachim, that's what we say every day. Yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's not well, some, you know, innovation. No, so I, I always look at Nachas Ruach as, like, me. Like, like, that's what I want. I want to bring Nachas Ruach to me. Not to Hashem. Because you don't know what that means. Right. I'm self, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So continue the tefillah instead of staying in the darkness. Continue my tefillah that I just started. You could do this. <laughs> you have it. Uh, yes, I'm told that um, I can bring happiness to you, Hashem, by performing your will. And help me have happiness for myself. Help, help me have nachas ruach. I believe that I'll have nachas ruach if you have nachas ruach. Okay, but you still kept I mean, it about, about you. I, I want to align our wills. I mean, it, 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 we're, we're there. We're there. I just okay. like this idea of like bringing a, a Hashem dancing, so to speak, or malachim dancing. Right. For like things like, like that's all. I, okay, I think you're going to continue writing this tefillah during this year. I think so. Look at the next paragraph. V'zeu perish apasuk. Sos asis ba'ashem. That's why we, we open the shir singing that nigun from Kardunar. Sos asis ba'ashem. Kloma. She'adam sameach b'ma shemavi la'kadosh baruch hu simcha b'ma'asav. Rav Kluger says real simcha is moments of awareness of you are conscious of the fact that what you're doing is bringing simcha before the borei olam. That what you're doing right now brings simcha before Hashem. Alavai, alavai, we should not just have moments like that where we were able to bring some, but that we should be aware of it. Like right now, what we're doing right now brings simcha to the Borei Olam. Vezea perush sos, klomar, shanochi sas v'sameach, I'm so happy and exalted, bame shani asis ba'ashem, shani gorem shasis, shani mevi simcha ba'bore baruchu, that's what brings me real simcha. I actually bring simcha. That's right. So now he's even giving psak, not really, but he's saying, and each man is obligated that what? He should have simcha on, what, on, the, on, on these inyanim and understand that Hashem has shashuim. It's like toys, it's like it's, Hashem plays with with what you're doing for him. But we're still stuck somewhere. Where are we stuck? Where are we stuck? These are all beautiful words, but where are we stuck with this? Recognizing, it's accepting. I think about like- well, One more word, like a basic word. Leading. Yeah. What's that, 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 like you could recognize, but you have to believe in it. I can recognize a lot of things, I have to have. I think it's semantics, but okay. Great, but really, emuna is where, is where it's re- the key over here. Like, I have to have emuna that when Chazal, I have to have emuna, emuna tzaddikim. If I don't, I'm, I, I won't be anywhere. So there are a lot of things I could say, listen, I'm just going to wait until I see it, until I feel it. You'll never get there. 
you'll wait your whole life. And Muna is that jump of saying, the more Muna I have in the words of the tzaddikim, and the more that I really have simcha right now in the Kaddish Baruch the fact that I'm bringing in simcha, it happens much more faster. But I need to form my tefillahs. I need to speak them out. I need to get it out from here into out here. Because why would I want to continue doing Torah and mitzvahs and look like the way most of us look like right now in this room? And really, like you guys, you look like you, look like you belong in that chalila, in that house we just came from right now, the Shiva house. Like we're learning about bringing Simcha to Hashem and each person here is like, something's wrong with me here. I don't know if I buy this. And whatever. So I'm being real. Like, like this, is what, this is what being real is. Looking like I'm being real. Real. So sasis b'ashem is because this has to happen with our whole Yiddish. It's not just now. It has to go into everything. Every mitzvah I do. I to stop looking at it like it's a da tovara. How good did I do it or how bad I did it. It's a chaim is that I wake up and there's billions of people in the world. There's a few, how many millions of Jews are there? Six, fifteen, I don't know what it is. Fourteen. Fourteen, fifteen. And from them, how many Jews engage themselves in a life of Torah and mitzvahs? That's the person to think about. How many? One. Not that many. One? No. One percent? I, I don't know. One million more. No, no, not one million. <laughs> a bit more. But, but what we're saying is, like, from the whole world... There's such a tiny, tiny percentage of people that are interacting with Hashem's will on a daily basis. I'm amongst them. And yet that doesn't bring me constant simcha because I'm stuck in the judgment all day long of, am I doing it good, am I doing it bad, is he happy with me, is he, is he, is he, is he angry at me? Leave that to Yom Kippur. Bring more into the daily, daily basis, the daily thing of... I'm in the parsha. I'm in the parsha. I'm in the parsha of bringing Hashem nachas ruach. That's what the Baal Shem Tov wanted to enlighten even the most simple yid that barely knows anything. He's like, wait a second. All the people in the world, you are involved. You're one of the few that's involved with like aligning yourself with his ratzon every single day. Stop for a second and just meditate on that. Think about that. As opposed to, why am I not feeling it? Why am I not feeling it? I want to be real. Why am I not feeling it? It's funny, right? It's such, this world is such sheker. It's unbelievable. It's such a joke. It's, such, it's, so, it's just sheker. Mamash. Even what we've done with Yiddishkeit, it's such a joke. It's such a joke. It's mamash a joke. Continue on the bottom of here. Vehini im adam ye anav. I want to be humble. Who am I that I can bring simcha to Hashem? He'll go into the heart and he'll say, This is one of the most wondrous things in the world about God. That what? Sheadam karutz michomer. You and I were made from something so physical and so like world huh? materialistic world yeah that I am going to bring simcha like Yossi was saying uh, me before the, the master of the world the highest the most exalted in the world like David Amenach says, you said it this morning, Yismach Hashem b'ma'asav. You want to, okay, should we do like Kavana checking right now? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, st- I'm standing very harif now. I'm, I fall into all this all the time also, but someone needs to like be a mirror sometimes, right? This morning in Shachas, Yismach Hashem b'ma'asav. Yehi chavod Hashem le'olam, Yismach Hashem b'ma'asav. What was your Kavana when you said Hashem takes simcha with his actions? Well, he looks at the new. He looks at the moon. He's like, "Wow, that's getting really a little crowded in here." Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, stuffy. <laughs> now, like, stop for a second. Now you have shachras tomorrow morning, right? You're gonna show up because of the guilt, not so much because you like have the right. So the guilt will bring you to shul tomorrow, or maybe not. But you'll probably put on tefillin, maybe by one p.m. Right? Knock off. Shmash. Manasseh. Guilt's done. If you knock in, Yehi Chavod Hashem. Allah. Yismach Hashem. Manasseh. 
What's going to be your kavana tomorrow morning when you say Hashem rejoices in his ma'asim, in the things that he did? You think that means Hashem looks at you and says, Yismach Hashem ma'asav, look at those hills I created. They bring me so much simcha. Look at my painting that I did that doesn't move and it's not a or- living organism. That brings me so much simcha. Yismach Hashem ma'asav. Hashem looks at his, at his yidin that are holding on for so many thousands of years to promises, to britot, to covenants. Yismach Hashem ma'asav. That's what Rav Kluger is saying. That's what it means. That he looks at us right now, and he's looking at us right now. Like, I just want you to really put this inside. This is happening right now. Right now, Hashem is looking at us, and it's Yismach Hashem and Ma'asav. Especially here in Eretz Yisrael, especially here. Like, we have a chiyuv much more than Yehudea Galut to really do this. Mamash. <clears throat> Ube Ma'asav, what does it mean, Ma'asav? Hu olam ha'asiya, olam ha'tachton. Who is an angel fulfilling a shlichus? Doesn't really bring so much nachas ruach. It's a check. You had to do this. You have no bechira. You have to do this. Us in olam asiya, that you're doing anything? Come on, come on, a little bit, a little bit. Plug into this. Machmat sheyesh lakel baruch hu nachat ruach mi bnei adam. This God has nachas from humans. Asher heima, especially us, asher heima. Mizera Yisrael, Avdo, Migodela Shashuim, who may be Shefa the Hon and Ivraim, Veha Yitzurim, Banaasim. Omnam, Omnam, now that, now that Rav Kluger is going to say, Okay, you guys, I know what you're still thinking. It's so hard to buy into this. Give me something stronger to hold on to. Omnam, Im Mitya Esh et Atzmo, the Omer She in the Kadush Baruch Nachas Rabba Tachtonim. Me? This is going to bring Nachat Ruach before the God of all gods, the highest of the high, the one that's running the show, that's been running the show forever. So look inside, Rav, Rav, Rav uh, Kluger says, En ze nikra anav veshafel berech ader haber hu notek kzat leminut. He's saying that the person that holds like that, out of humility, to say, who am I to do this? He said, Rav Kluger says, I hate to break it to you. You're not humble. You're much more closer to being an apikoros than being humble. Karov leminut. It's what's mean? A mean in apikoros. A mean is an apikoros. A heretic. You're much more closer to being an apikoros. Not trying to, I mean, I know you think this about yourself anyway, but <laughs> think, you know what I mean. That voice that, that is chai v'kayim in all of us is much more the sound of an apikoros than it is of someone that, that, that's a baal anava. Why? Why is that? Because it's not Amos. doesn't believe. But why Dafka, like Minus, why Dafka Apikorsus? Because the, you're not, you're not, someone who's an Amunah knows that Hashem's Hashkacha is in everything that we do in every place and everywhere we are. So when we do a mitzvah, if you, if you can't recognize that doing a mitzvah is something massive, then, then it's... Then it's you're denying, sad, you're denying, you're denying the value of the, of, yeah. Yeah, you're denying the, the mitzvahs. You're denying the reality. Nahon. That's why he says you're much more closer to being an apikoros than being a, a, an ana from this. Uh, ad, again, sec, uh, end of second line. Ad rabbe hu notek tzat leminut ve'en ze ana v'shafel berach ha'ole ha'ole b'nei adam. Ki en nachat ruach l'kadosh baruch hu me'asim l'tzono. Rak ze ha'derech. Shadam mit aneg beet asher lomed umekayem mitzvotav. That a person has pleasure while he's learning and keeping mitzvahs. The ikar anachas ruach shel bnei Yisrael beet oskam bil vavam shealokei elokim vaadonei adonim yesh lo nachat ruach kiv yachol vesameach bemaaseinu atovim. What? When I'm sitting down and learning something, I go to a shir. So what stops me from the awareness and the consciousness of I am bringing nachat ruach to Hashem? Because I judge the session, how much this brings pleasure, based on what? How much I understood. How much I wasn't taking out my, my phone during the shi'a. That's what I base, I don't base it on the mere presence of, that this is, that this is happening. That's not, it's, a, it's an etadat evaluation. Nachon? It's an etadat evaluation. It's not an etadat it's a high evaluation. Is this? This is what I'm gross. This is what I'm in right now. 
This is amazing. But the Eitz Adat evaluation comes in and says, you really want to bring Nachat to Hashem? It's mamish the way that you have perceived Nachat like you bring a college professor. Or anything in this world that's more about just like, um, you know, numbers. And, and, and We've done that also over here as well. But he's saying over here, Rav Kluger is saying, you have to understand Adam mit aneg. A person has pleasure while he's learning Torah. While he's mekayim mitzvahs. This is the ego <coughs> nachas ruach we could bring Hashem in this world. Yeah. What is the aversion? I don't feel like I'm conscious of the aversion or like what is our win of not living this way? Of not thinking in this way? A, not looking like you this morning. Right. I'm serious. No, what is our win of not accepting this? Like why am I having an aversion to this? What is my pushback? I'm just not aware of it. Tell me. I don't know. know. It's Yeshus. It's ego. What is it? It's ego. Okay. It's, the Alter Rebbe would say it's Yeshus. Absolutely. One million percent. Well, that's exactly it's about you. Here. He's saying false humility. You're not actually being humble at all. It's, it's, it's about you. It's much more about you and what you feel out of it as opposed to what you should believe is happening to not you. But if it's more about me, 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 I'll feel less, less, less on it. Because it's more about me. I mean, you leave Shul on Sunday morning, you're like, all right, got, Did that, it. got that that's done. But really what we should be saying is, check yourself before you go there and be like, I really made a Kaddish Baruch Hu. I brought him not as Ruach. Like I was thinking this yeah. morning, like, uh, I expected one of my kids to be at me this morning. And I walked into the house and I saw he was finishing Dabra when I came in. Like, clearly he was running late or something like that. That really brought me not Because mm-hmm. like, I don't know, in my mind, I'm thinking he's still in bed, I'm gonna come in. No, I saw him, you know, finishing to wrap up, and I'm like, okay. So like, I don't know, I have, I have a hard time getting to, I, I struggle with the part of leaving Shul and feeling like, connecting like what I said before, which is, okay, I, I did it, but it brought Hashem and Nachas. But I don't have a hard time believing that it brings the Nachas. I don't know if that mm-hmm. makes sense. I believe it brings process, but I have a hard time just remembering that and allowing that to like transform what I'm doing and like. Uh, because it must be, because it's got to be consistent. It, can, it has to be like the general way I think about my life. Do they say you're struggling to yourself? All the time. I'm telling you, it's a big game changer. I heard uh, this week, I was telling somebody who's one of his chassidim about what we're learning, and he said that he's heard that by the Rav Shabbos table, there's not. It was barely any debris Torah shared. The entire time was spent with him paying compliments to everybody at the table and everybody paying compliments to each other at the table. That's good. Maybe that's the biggest debris Torah. Exactly. exactly. You still, you still, uh, you still having a hard time? Yeah. I was thinking along the lines of what Tokyo was saying. I think the best way to connect to this for me is thinking about when my children do something and. They're, they're trying to make me happy with what they're doing. And when they see that I am happy, I'm proud of what they've done in a way, it, the, the simple that it makes in them is hard, hard to measure. And, and, and if we can only disconnect on Avinu uh, Shamayim in the same way, it, it, I don't think it would be so hard. You know, your kid does something, it could even be something silly, but it makes, it makes you as a parent laugh. The kid is like, that, that's... You couldn't get them a, a, a gift that would make them happier than them seeing that they've made you happy. But you can show them that. That's that's the. I'm that's saying the I agree. No, I agree. That's, that's the what I'm saying. But right. I'm saying that's the difference. But if that if we recognize that that's actually what's happening, if we believe that Hashem is a vina bashamayim, bashamayim, so it, it becomes less of a stretch. The hardest part, I think, is maintaining the consciousness of it. A tzaddik would walk in here right now. Rev Weinberger would walk in right now, and he'd look at each of us and say, he'd say, it's so, I, I, I hope you know you're bringing so much nachas to Hashem right now. Why would that, why would that help us? Because we're hearing it from someone that believes it. Still not approved. Uh, I that's bless you I, to I, never, yeah. ever look for proofs. I hear you. That's no, not, that's not that's this one. Uh, my... my uh, my challenge has nothing to do with, oh, he's so big and I'm so small. I don't have a problem getting over that hurdle. I mean, he created the world, he created me. Right. So why shouldn't he be able to? But, but again, you know, there's no, 
normally, listen, if you do something nice for your wife, I think generally you feel better about it if you got acknowledged, as opposed to, you know, I could do whatever that's this not, little thing. I could I do the same thing that's for self nachas. That's not, I'm just, no, it's not nachas. It's it's it's. I, I love you. It's ego. It's not nachas. It's not nachas. But how would you? It's ego. I feel good. It makes me feel good. But you could do. Let's say I did the same thing for ten years and got no feedback whatsoever. I did this thing for my wife and I never got any feedback forever. At some point, I could certainly question whether whether the, I'm having any effect or not. Correct. You know, you do, you do a nice thing for somebody. At some point, Absolutely. you're going to like, well, you know, what a week, a month, a year. So it's the same thing with Hashem. It, what it, would be the equivalent of but, Hashem letting you know, like your wife, what, would that, what, would that, what well, do you think that, that sounds like? I, what is Hashem saying what? thank you? What, what, what is that, the acknowledgement from Hashem, what, is, what, would, what do you think that would sound like to you? The acknowledgement from Hashem? Yeah, it's 10 years, I'm bringing flowers. What's, what does the acknowledgement from the Ribbon Shleilam sound like to you? Um, I think the acknowledgement would just simply be that if I would look inside, then I would understand that the, the affirmation really doesn't come from other people. It, doesn't, it comes from that feeling inside and the knowledge that Hashem implanted into me that I'm doing the right thing. So, just goes ahead to what I believe. If I believe... Wait, that, David, I well, I, don't, don't go yeah, on. Yeah, Stop. Yeah. Say it again a bit more simply. I want, I'm going to ask it again. Oh, yeah. I want you to answer it again. Okay? Say it, because it's Chinese to most of us. I, yeah. I want to I work with what you just said. You're giving your wife flowers for 10 years. You're giving the Rebun 10 years of Shachas, right? Two, yeah. two weeks of Shachas. It doesn't matter what it is. It's a little bit different because you're not giving it to Hashem. Hashem doesn't need anything. So it's not really the good mashal. Hashem doesn't need anything. Hashem is perfect. But even so, what would be what would it be the equivalent? What is how does it mitagem in our life? The concept of hearing from my wife, thank you, the acknowledgement that I am actually bringing her simcha. What does that sound like? What do you think that sounds like from Hashem? That I'm bringing Hashem simcha. What does it sound like? What does it look like? Or what does it feel like? Yeah, it's that feeling inside of completeness, of shalom. That you're, you know, it's it's a feeling inside. That, that I think that I should be okay, Ari. doing everything. Ari. It also feels a little, bit, it feels a little bit conditional. We're saying, am I giving Hashem Nachas right now? Okay, we're in Chabura right now. So, like, what I need to be in Chabura all the time? For... There are people that actually, this is wacky, far out, old concept. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's insane. Some wacky Jews are into this stuff. It's called learning Torah all day long. <laughs> Kolo. It used to be in the, in the 1500s. Is, anyway, continue, I'm sorry. Continue. No, it's you might, but... No, my answer is maybe. I don't know. For some people, it, 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 may, it may be. I so don't know. So is that the conditional... No, no I don't know. I, I'm not going to pass it. It's, 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 what do I know? you a guy. It's like coming from you. The guy's working Eretz Yisrael. Like you're building Eretz Yisrael every day. You're, you're, you're endangering your, you and your, and your wife and your family and everything just so that you could you could lichbosh the aretz and you're talking to me about fake is about nachas to Hashem. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're, you're more sick than any of us here. Thank you. Does not wake up. Don't you wake up in the morning and be like, oh my God, I'm alive. Hashem is pumping my heart and there's blood going through my veins. I can see. When you say for a the shahar, like, don't you realize that's Hashem talking to you? I mean, that's I don't have this problem because, like, that's, you know, that's, I'm trying to work on that all day long. When I see someone in a, like, that's a show in a wheelchair or someone who's suffering mentally, physically, I think, wow, thank you, Hashem. You make me that's thank you. Great sar. Thank you so much. Good. And, 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 and me, to me, that's, that's the message. That's, that's the response. Does it bring you simcha to then engage in a, in a, in a life like it that? It drives my whole life. I mean, that's, that's, what it, that's what I'm trying to work. I'm not saying I do this all the time and I'm perfect. I'm just saying that's what I work towards thinking about but in point, order to get to that point. point I, could, I could have that kind of reaction or that kind of empathy or that kind of I'm so fortunate because I see other people who have less than it makes me, 
I, I don't have to have all this religion and all these other right. things. I don't have to have that. I just be right. Be a good person. Do whatever, and I can right. still achieve. Right. Torah and that. That's another. So, but I think what we're talking about is why do we wake up in the morning? Like, I, I mean, I actually I've been thinking. It's funny. I've been thinking about this all the time. You know, I set that alarm, and Mamash, if I didn't have a minion to get to, and Sikui. I mean, in, in my situation, because I don't have my own boss, I don't have to be there at any time. I wouldn't set that alarm. Right. I'd go back to what I was doing a few years ago when I wasn't. I wasn't so happy. I, I'm, so, I mean, I think the affirmation yeah. is that I'm happier now because I feel like I'm accomplishing something. Right. Why do I feel like I'm accomplishing something? Hashem's putting that inside of me. I don't know it's coming in, but he, I, I feel like I'm accomplishing That's good. I like I, I, I do too. I, I want to explain what, like, I, I, I don't, I'm not total apicorous. Like, I'm, <laughs> like, 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 there is, there is, there is some level of Amuna. I thought, I think he, he just, David just described it yeah. pretty well. Like, meaning, so I do it for me. First of all, I want to be aligned with Hashem's right song. Like, like, let me say that. And this is how I kind of perceive it. There's always higher, higher levels, but it's better for you, Yas, if you try to play that, if you try to align yourself with Hashem, because you're going to end up feeling better. Now, if he, Hashem, ends up feeling better, well, this is like just great. Bonus. This is great. You know, maybe I should be like leading with that before myself. I think that that's what he's saying, that it's got to be. It's got to be a fuch. That's, it's got to be a fuch. I'm, 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 I'm in it. Like, I'm in it. The other thing I would say is, I, I do think very. I do buy into olam acher. I don't even say olam haba, but like I do believe that there is this. You create malachim on how you behave in this world, positive and negative. And so yes, I, I'll, I, I'm cool with uh, a malach being created for you, Yas, by being here to help, hope, so to speak, maybe defend you um, in, in 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 the next world. And also when you don't behave well, the other malach. So like 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 the. This engagement of like, hey Hashem, maybe like for him, for Hashem, who's, who's timeless, so hey, it'll give Hashem a lot of nachas when I have to, so to speak, go before him and like, hey, you did kabur, you did some nice things along the way. All right, you know, you're in, you're gonna have to hang out and be a little closer to me. But as far as like the right here and now, and like I that 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 connection, I I, I'm, I have trouble with. I'm like trying to imagine what that conversation would be like in Olam Haemet. Yeah. And I, what I come to is that Hashem is saying, listen, you, you got here, you made it to the big leagues, right? But what a waste of the way that you got here. Meaning, meaning what? You meaning could have, you could have enjoyed the pro, you could have enjoyed the process. Yeah. Also seems like you're, you're... How could you have enjoyed the process? By being aware that you were giving me simcha the whole time. So yeah, meaning you could have enjoyed meaning, the process even more. Meaning the end game, you got to the same place. You're... you're Whatever you, yeah. uh, whatever you got to that end place, but the Rebbeinu Shleim, it seems based on what he's saying over here, is like it's as almost, almost as like Hashem saying, but you could, you Dafka, you that got to the same place and did Torah and mitzvahs, you the the journey to here, you got here, but the journey to here was why I sent you to this world, not to make it to here. I sent you to this world to make the journey that much more deeper, and, and you were here before you you, you were sent down. So the point was not, not how much you could self-torture yourself while you're down here. You could have come back to the same place you came from and done it through so much simcha by being aware that every time you engage yourself with one of my commandments, you were bringing me so much simcha. You know, to, 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 to the point of simcha, like we, we spoke about, like, I, I mentioned Lakewood, or just like as far as like those guys like being very serious. Someone sent out recently the the, the pun of Yeah. yeah. And, and so again, the I what, the what? Pun, so someone sent out a, a, an old recording that just came up of the Panovich Rav in Panovich, you know, teaching Torah to his Talmudian and, and the guys that are there and what it's like. And I, I would, in my head, in my own preconceived notions, I would put him in the same Litvak type of, you know, situation. And there you see him teaching Gemara and the, these guys are really into it. But this guy, the, this Rav has such Simcha Stein, like him, you really see Simcha, meaning it's, it's, it's nothing like like I thought. It wasn't fire, it was such simcha. It's really good eye to like see this guy's to see his face. Why do you think he was the simcha? Why do I think he was the simcha? Yeah. Because he was he was engaged in he was aligned with Hashem and his words and Did his, you see the stories I heard about uh Rukhain Brisker giving kids uh Yeah, 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 no yeah. He'll be the horse. Right. In the right. way you described it yesterday, it seems like you feel like Hashem's only gonna interact with what you've done in your life once you get in front of the, the prosecuting angels, but 
right? You're saying you're creating malachim and then you'll be judged and at the end, but you're interacting with Hashem every second of every day. It's not just like you're compiling the good malachim and the pasachim, the, the, the bad malachim, just to, to, to represent you at the end. There's, there's a relationship that's happening right now. Do we think we're hurting Hashem? Let's just say, let's say you're right, we're knocking ourselves all the time. I mean, do we have a Muna at least that like, boy, I really blew it, Hashem. Like, do we, do we at least believe that? Hurting Hashem? Just like I believe I'm giving Hashem nachas, right? I'm to, because I'm such a good guy, but like we're, we're self-persecuting ourselves all the time. So let's say the other side. Do you believe self-persecuting because, boy, Hashem, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm blowing this opportunity that you're giving me. Not, I mean, yeah, I think I'm that, hurting I think that you. it's more about I'm offending you. Not, not hurting or offending you. I just feel like when you feel like you've been a waste of <clears> creation, <throat> that's really sad. It just causes a halal. It causes an empty space. So it's not hurting shameless. You can't detract from shameless. But it's a very heavy thing when you feel like you're wasting, you know. Rabbi Weinger was speaking about this about Shvicha Zerl of Atal. He was the Malka we did. He was talking about wasting see, but he was saying also we waste words, we waste moments, we waste opportunities, like, that's the tikkun yasod, is this whole thing of not to waste opportunities, to really... That's what people think, though. I, I think that because the the Nefesh would just do this all the time. If, if there was no Yetzir, then we would just be dominating and learning all the time. Mm. That's all we would... No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be mitzvahs. There wouldn't be davening. There wouldn't be maasim. You wouldn't. There's nothing. There's nothing. What you're describing is not. It's not a mitzvah of this world. You wouldn't be here. So, theoretically, well, before before Adam sinned, right? Then he was alive with Hashem's will, and there wasn't a. If he was, he wouldn't have sinned. So he made a. You're saying that it was, it, but it's harder for us now. It's just stronger now. It's the same game. I guess where I was going was that um, generally, I think people uh, like what you judge. If you look back, you judge is whether you're productive in the day. So did I accomplish something? Work did I accomplish? All these things I needed to do. Right. And all these things that we like look at. I mean, a lot of times we look at it, it had nothing to do with whether I got dominion or whatever. It's like, right. did I accomplish this thing? Right. Did I do all these things? Um, and I, I guess so it's an extent that if it wasn't for the Yitzhara, we wouldn't have had, we wouldn't be accomplished anything in the world. That's what, mm-hmm. I guess it was where I'm going. Without Yitzhara, we would just sit here, we would just do this because we would be content. But there's certainly something in me that, like, I get restless. If I like, said learn and learn and learn, like there's something in me that's unfulfilled. Right. Like then, and, and we have to kind of control that. But when that thing becomes really big, then you say, I'm like, I waste. Sometimes I feel, oh, I wasted, I hear, I wasted the day. I didn't work enough. I, I didn't do that. I, I didn't feel that all the time. So, and when someone you're sitting in shul and you're like, man, like, and the thoughts start coming, I, you know, these other things that are going on in my mundane life right. start, they're demanding a lot of attention. And, and so then I, you know, some, sometimes you can get the thought that, well, I spent how many hours a day in Yiddishkeit, what a waste, because I didn't accomplish A, B, C, D, and E, and now I'm even more stressed because I'm getting more behind. So I think there's like a whole... If you believed that the things that you were involved with in Yiddishkeit were bringing nachas ruach to Hashem, you wouldn't view any of the time that you spent on it as a waste. Nachon, uh, except that, uh, you know, when my reality can be that, yeah, I can believe that it's bringing a lot of nacha, but that doesn't set aside the fact that, God, you know, things aren't going well at work and the money isn't coming in and I'm not going to, like, you know. It's true. And, and I can get play that mind game that if I just put more effort into this, it would, you know, everything I learned to read says, you know, it doesn't really work like that. Right. You got to put in X amount of effort, and then you're gonna get so back whatever. This is what I'll tell you. What I got from Rav Biederman more than anything I've gotten from him is what, exactly what you just said right yeah. now. Yeah, hishtadlus is a become an abusive word. Why? Because where do I usually work, use the word hishtadlus in? What department? Work. Amazing. Why don't you have hishtad just the same amount of hishtadlus in the other arena? 
I guess that's the point I'm making. Is Mamash, I, that, what I get from Rav Biedem is that Nikuda yeah. more than anything and else. And I've been, I, I've gotten it too, and I, so I try to live that. He Ishtadlus, I have to show in order. I can't just sit around and do Torah mitzvah believe. I have to Ishtadlus, work, I gotta do the work, I can't just expect it. And how much emphasis we put on Ishtadlus when it comes to the things that I have to work on to make sure that it doesn't bother my, my, my To me it's even life. more than that, that the Ishtadlut that I put into my Yiddish guy is actually very important in, in being able to control the Yetzer and my other, so, so that it doesn't get out of control. Mm-hmm. Like, because otherwise, you know, and probably a lot of us in the room are like that, guys, we could work. And once we get on a roll and we're working, you know, I'll work d- two days in a row. Yeah. I'll work. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm working, and I'm like, sure. whatever. And, are you but, motivated? Huh? No, just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But... <laughs> Don't ask that question. <laughs> no, uh, you know, but, 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 but put me here, and I don't know, I couldn't make it two days here. I couldn't make it in a, in a, in a, in a, at this point in my life. I couldn't make it. But that's the thing, you could. I could, but right now I don't feel like, you know, yeah, I have not you not feel that muscle. The fact that you don't feel it right now does not mean that you can't. True enough. Okay, that's Dahlia Fenster 101, by the way. Yeah, no, true okay, enough. I'm just saying that. True enough. Like that, we have to, yeah, we have to realize it's that. Not, it, it wouldn't... Uh, I feel like when I'm working and I'm on a roll, it's much easier for me to just, uh, uh-huh. you know, plow through. And then it feels good. That feels really good. And maybe it should feel good. It's not, uh, but... Listen, plowing, not plowing, the little bit, the a lot. I think that the, the point of what he's saying over here so far has been that I could, you're right, like a man, I could get in a rhythm. And I could not stop, right? But the thing is, even if you don't get in a rhythm, even the small amounts that you're able to engage in things that actually matter in this world should not just make you feel good. It should make you feel good for the right reason. Things in that we engage with in Yiddishkeit should make us feel good, but make us feel good for the right reason. If I was engaged, if I was happy because of the right reasons, then those moments that I dedicate to Torah and mitzvahs would grow. It would be more emphasis on that. But because I'm usually not generally happy spiritually for the right reasons, it's more ego, it doesn't enable me to stretch out those moments. Because they're limited, they're finite. But when I taste these, these aneg, you know, shomrei shabbos v'kore oinek, those moments become much more longer for me. Because I'm happy. What does it mean v'kore I'm happy that I'm giving Hashem oinek right now. Lit aneg el Hashem. So I know this seems like a high aspiration, but I think that like everything we're trying to say about your shikoyach to yourself and all these things, it's not your for yourself that you did something good. You should for yourself that you enabled yourself to be happy for the right reason. That should be a big shikoyach to yourself. That's the greatest shikoyach to yourself. Like right now, I, I, we have to end the woman's share. Like right now, Beseda Baruch Hashem, we spent a few minutes. Was this a waste? Why not? There's no conclusions. I'm not taking home a certificate and I did not bring any money into the house right now. Lefech. I might, have, I might have not made money right now. I could have made money right now. So why, 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 are we, why are we not looking at this period as a waste right now? Because something inside of us is screaming for, for recognition. Something that's, something that's starving is screaming for recognition. And we have to keep on plunging away and going, getting more and more serious about it and tending to it much more. And Rav Kluger is not letting us get away with it. He's just not. He's just like beautiful. He's just like... Saying, look, if, you, if you've come in contact with me and you met me, you sat by me and you heard me say such words and you saw how I was, like, I'm not going to let you get out of the rap. And we're saying, don't let us. You know, don't let us. That's Amunas Tadikim. Please, wrap me. Put your arms around me. And I'm not, I'm not leaving it. So I think that we, for, for this month, we have one more day to learn with Kluger on Tuesday. And we're going to say something else about to drill these Nikudas home. Because... It would be beautiful, it would be beautiful if from now until Tuesday we have six minyanim, we have six times to daven, we have hundreds of brachas to say, we have infinite amount of moments to engage ourselves with chaye olam, with, with life of eternity, simple Talmud Torah, simple Talmud Torah, libidab Talmud Torah. Let's just be aware of the, how, much na, how much onik we bring on Kaddish Baruch Hu. and if not, to be aware of that also, and bring that back to the table and say, why is it that I really don't feel like I'm bringing nachas to Hashem? And B, do I even want that to be my avodah Hashem? 
The deepest thing is to be, to see where the Yeshus takes over, where it's your ego, and where it's not. Like, that's what we're really trying to aim towards. Like, when it's really about me, as opposed to being about Hashem. Again, remember, if it's about me, the moments of Simcha are just basically very, very momentary. They're very finite. But when it becomes more about Hashem, like, I'm going, like, for me right now, I'm going to walk up the stairs, walk across the street, and continue giving this incredible chavra of women that we've been learning, Dovavi, for two years. Same, same thing. How much of it am I going to, how, how much simcha am I going to feel after this year based on how good I felt this year went? Or the fact that it exists, because that it exists brings nachas to Hashem. Then I can go into details afterwards. But just, I mean, I'm saying this to myself too. Okay? You should correct this.